Hello. Um, I'm going to go over the wiki for Luke and Badolf history. Um, come in honor of Canada Day. Uh, so the history and the etymology comprising uh, 40,000 acres or 160 square kilometers of Middlesex County. Uh, Middlesex County is a primarily rural county in southwestern Ontario, Canada, covering uh, 3,317.27 square kilometers landlocked. The country is, the county is bordered by Huron and Perth counties on the north and Oxford County on the east, Elgin County on the south, and Chatham Kent, and uh, I believe um, another one on the west. Um, it cut off to the other wiki. The township of Badolf was surveyed by agents of the Canada Company in 1830. The Canada Company was a large private chartered British land development company incorporated by Royal Charter on August 19, 1826 under an act of British Parliament given royal assessment on June 27, 1825 to aid in the colonization of a large part of Upper Canada. So the township took its name from John Badolf, one of the earliest directors of the Canada Company. Um, until its incorporation in 1872, the village of Lucan had been known as Marystown. Name is in tribute to the wife of John McDonald, who was the original land surveyor of the area. Um, I believe that's John A. McDonald, the uh, first prime minister, but I'm not sure. When a duplicate Marystown was found to have already registered with the post office, the name Lucan was put forth and accepted by the postal authorities. Lucan was named in tribute to Lord Lucan, a prominent land owner in Ireland. Field Marshal George Charles Bingham III, Earl of Lucan, styled Lord Bingham before 1839, was an Anglo-Irish aristocrat and British Army officer. He was a ruthless landlord during the Great Famine in Ireland, evicting thousands of his own people. Um, if you want to look up Lord Lucan, you should. Uh, you're named after... Uh, you're named after John Badolf and Lord Lucan, so that's pretty something settlement. Um, so this is the settlement between the Canada Company. Uh, despite more than 500 kilometers or 310 miles to the north, in 1829 the area became a refugee for a group of free African Americans from Cincinnati, Ohio, who had been threatened by riots and job discrimination by white people in their city. A group of roughly 200 black Americans were granted refuge in land by the Canada Company and duly set up a colony named Wilberforce. This was one of the earliest, if not the earliest, settlements connected with the American Colonization Society, which was established in 1816 to settle free African Americans in an African colony in Upper Canada and or West Africa, and was established before emancipation. Emancipation is the Slavery Abol Abolition Act of 1833 um, abolished slavery in parts of the British Empire. The Act of the Parliament of the United Kingdom expanded the jurisdiction of the Slave Trade Act from 1807 and made the purchase or ownership of slaves illegal within the British Empire. Sorry. Um, yeah, so the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 is what they're talking to when they say the Emancipation Act. Uh, the flight of black refugees escaped slaves from the south northward into Canada beginning around this time was a part was as part of the Underground Railroad. So if you guys didn't know London, Ontario and area was a huge part of the ending of the Underground Railroad into freedom. Um, the Underground Railroad was a network of secret routes and safe houses established in the United States during the early to mid 19th century and used by enslaved African Americans to escape into free states in Canada. The scheme was assisted by abolitionists and other people. Most of the black Cincinnatians uh, came from city life and did not adapt well to the harsh farming environment, as anyone would expect. They cleared large lots of land by logging and working hard to sustain the colony, but much of the population declined through the 1840s as many of the original colonists moved on to larger growing urban cities centers such as Detroit, Cleveland, or Toronto to obtain wage-based employment. A small number remained to work the land through subsequent generations. 
The area was further logged and settled by white people in the 1840s and later many from Ireland, some of whom purchased farmsteads from the departing black settlers or new lots sold to them cheaply by the Canada Company. Nowadays, fewer than 40 descendants of the ancestral black inhabitants remain. By 1850, the majority of the township's landholders were Irish Catholics, many of whom had immigrated from farming lands in County Tipperary, Ireland. Early History An important railway route belonging to the Grand Trunk Railway opened in 1856, passing through the village. The village and surrounding township prospered as a result of quicker access to larger marketplaces such as Toronto, farther to the east, and new immigrants settling in the area. Its post office was established the following year in 1857. The Donnelly Massacre, also known as the Black Donnelly Massacre. Bidolf Township is known as the site of the brutal massacre on February 4, 1880 of five of the Black Donnellys, an immigrant Irish family caught up in a long-standing local feud. They were not actually colored black, they just were called that. These events have been written about many times and is etched in the criminal history of rural Ontario. It is well known in Canada and nearby areas of the United States. There were two trials and nobody was ever convicted. Lucan Snowstorm. A record snowfall, aka Snowmageddon, occurred between December 4th to 8th, 2010, affecting Huron and Middlesex counties. A total of 177 centimeters or 68 inches of snow fell during the 102 hour period. It snowed on 98 of those hours. Bacon Fest. The festival celebrates bacon, motorcycles, and live music. Started in 2014 by a local business and the township, the event has increased in attendance to over 30,000 people and it is held every second Jan Saturday in July. You should go, it's Bacon Fest. Go let them know where their land's from. Demographics. Um, this Canadian census for Luke and Bedolf community profile. Uh, historic population, in 1996 there was uh, 41,066 people, 2001 there was 42,000, 2006 there was 4187, 2011 4338, and 2016 4700. So the population's stayed pretty stagnant. Um, there's really no, not a large increase in the last 10 years. It went up from 4,166 people to 4,700. It's like 8.3 percent population increase. Uh, the median age is 39 and a half years old. Males it's 39 and females it's 40. Um, population density uh, 27.8 per square kilometer or 72 per square mile. Uh, land area and population um, household median income is 84,829. Total private dwellings, 18,003, sorry, 1,800, not 18,000, that would be crazy. 1,837 private dwellings and a medium household income, median household income of 84,000, so $85,000 a year. Uh, population prior to amalgamation in 1999, there's no link for that. Uh, population total in 1996, there is 4,166, Badolf Township, there was 2,208, and then Lucan the Village, there was 1,958 people. Population in 1991, uh, Badolf, the whole township, like the township area around the village, where it was 2,196, and then Lucan the town, 1,847. Sports. Lucan is home to the Lucan Irish, a junior hockey team that plays in the Provincial Junior Hockey League. Lucan was the home of the Lucan Ilderton Jets senior AA hockey team, hockey club, sorry, a member of the Western Ontario Athletic Association Senior Hockey League. Western University is in London, Ontario. Until they moved to Kamoka, Ontario and became the Kamoka Classics in 2011. Lucan FC represents Lucan and Ontario Soccer Association play in the Elgin Middlesex Soccer Association. Alexander Nobel Garrett, born on the homestead lot 11, South Boundary, Badolf, August 13, 1862, was an outstanding athlete who excelled at a number of different sports. In particular, he was the goalkeeper on the Canadian soccer teams that toured Britain in 1888 and 1891. Later, he was the sports editor of the Toronto World newspaper for many years. His son, Dudley Mark Garrett, played football for the Toronto Argonauts, and grandson, Dudley Maureen Garrett, played hockey for the Toronto Maple Leafs and New York Rangers. Um, 
A. N. Garrett, those are his initials, died in Toronto January 17, 1941. In 2018, the community was the winner of the Craft Hockeyville competition and hosted the first preseason game of the year for the Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Ottawa Senators on Tuesday, September 18th, which also marked the on-ice debut of forward John Taver Taveras as a member of the Maple Leafs. Um, John Taveras is a Canadian professional ice hockey center and captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, NHL. He was selected first overall by the New York Islanders in 2009 NHL entry draft, where he spent nine, se nine seasons. Um, and there's our references, there's C also, and then there's some external links to the township of Lucan Bidolf, uh, the Lucan Area Heritage and Donnelly Museum, and the winning of the Lucan 2018 Craft Hockey Bill. Um, if you're not aware, I used to work in Toronto on uh, Craft Hockey Bill, um, so this was pretty big news to hear that Lucan had won. It was something that I wanted to make happen when I was working there, but I, I, I suspect, like, obviously, that was one rule they did follow was you can't win if you're an employee. Um, the Lucan Area Heritage and Donnelly Museum um, is located... You can email them at Lucan Heritage at Donnelly Museum with two L's. Oops, .com. You can call them at 519-227-0756. And they're located at 171 Main Street, box, uh, box number 427, Lucan, Ontario, N0M2J0. Get in touch. They'd love to hear from you. That's what they said on their website. Um, it says... On their About Us, our museum, founded in 1995, the Lucan Area Heritage Museum is an integral part of the community. The Lucan Area Heritage currently consists of approximately 25 members, but we are always inviting new members to join. We are proud of our new museum. I'm going to have to increase the size. We are proud of our new museum and feel it has benefited the community of Lucan Badolf economically and culturally. Make that money. Our local restaurants and businesses have profited from the many visitors to the museum. Local area heritage has come a long way since the formation in the spring of 1995. Our background is steeped in cultural heritage, including not only the infamous Donnelly tragedy, tragedy um, the Black Donnelly Massacre, um, but also the Wilberforce Settlement and the Irish settlers. There is a lot of history in Lucan and many stories to be told. Our motto, our motto remembering our past to establish our, to establish our future holds true and members of the Lucan Air Area Heritage work hard to honor its motto. So the website's pretty great. Um, they have the, the museum. It's been uh, around since 1995. Um, it's moved around quite a bit and uh, their current location, they've been there since 2009, so since like, I graduated high school. Um, it was never something that we did on our history trips. We never learned about it in school. It was just word of mouth. Our mission, remembering our past to establish our future, Lucan Area Heritage and Donnelly Museum is dedicated to the preservation and retelling of the most famous historical events of the area. Our offerings, our museum, our museum offers tours of the museum and heritage buildings, uh, vigilante bus tours, vigilant or vigilante, I don't know, group tours, school programs, escape room bookings, What? And various events throughout the years. Escape the massacre! Oh god. And then they have a visit us, 50s rock and roll extravaganza with a little icon. It's, and then at the top there's some dice and it says save the date for June 13th. So if they did have that during COVID, that's really gross. Uh, there's history, there's the escape room, gift shop, contact, and more. All new! Donnelly Escape Room, coming May 2019. Tickets, admission, $25 per person, time slots, Monday to Sunday, 5.30 to 6.30, 7 to 8, 8.30 to 9.30. Call 519-227-0756 to book. Please book 24 hours ahead of time. Credit card required for reservations, of course. Gift certificates available for purchase year-round and museum gift shop. Minimum group of two. Recommend a maximum of eight. The escape room is exceptional. Would highly recommend this to anyone who enjoys learning a touch of history and can handle a little bit of a spook. Mandy said that. Miranda said, One of the best escape rooms I have ever been to and a brilliant way to raise money for the museum. We loved it. Sharon, 
The escape room was a lot of fun. The time flew by. Staff at the museum and escape room were excellent. Matthew took my wife here for her birthday and two other couples and had a blast. Very doable. Escape with some teamwork. Yeah, um, we should have a escape uh, Medway High School museum. Oh god. I'll help make it. Don't worry. Once I can see properly. If you guys know a great optometrist that like won't get like upset that I'm dyslexic and I had a rock thrown in my eye when I was a kid, that would be wonderful. Because like reading those stupid sheets, I can't even read normally. Like why do you think, what do you think? Like, of course they both look the same. Don't get mad at me, lens operator. Help me see. That's all I mean. Like I just want somebody to help me see. And like I barely trust people as it is. Just fucking... Ugh. Let me just, I don't know, give me the eye surgery or something so I don't have to worry about glasses because I got nodes on the back of my ears too so I can never really wear them anyway. Like, I would love surgery on my eyes so that I could see things for once. It's been years.